Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship on this Pentecost Sunday. And Pentecost means red. Red, the color of the Holy Spirit, the tongues as of fire that came to rest on the disciples' heads, and also the blood of the martyrs who gave their lives in faithful witness so that the church may grow and spread. A special welcome to our guests today. We invite you to come back and worship with us here at Emmanuel anytime. Uh, Vicar Wagon Connect is in St. Louis at an ordination, and Pastor Rodriguez is leading worship this morning at this service uh, at Peace Lutheran down the street. So Pastor will be back later on. Vicar will be back later this evening. We'll be following Divine Service Setting 4 on page 203 in our hymnal for the liturgy this morning. And our opening hymn, O Holy Spirit, Enter In, hymn 913. God's blessings on our time in his word this day. On that first Pentecost, we are told that 3,000 were baptized into the Lord and the Holy Spirit came into their lives. Today, we witness the Holy Spirit coming into the life of Kinsley Joe, giving her the gift of faith 
making her a child of God and an heir of heaven. As we witness this miracle, we turn to page 268 in your hymnal. We ask you to follow along there in the baptismal liturgy. And our service begins in the name in which we are baptized, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how is this child named? Kinsley Joe White. Kinsley Joe White received the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ, the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Kinsley Joe according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood, all sin in her, which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Kinsley Joe as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join the family in praying together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. I invite the congregation to faithfully speak answers to questions that we ask concerning the faith into which Kinsley Joe is baptized today. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, yes I believe. Who brings this child to be baptized? <laughs> Kinsley, Joe, white. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. In holy baptism, God the Father has made Kinsley Joe White, a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Kinsley Joe the new birth in holy baptism, and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Our service now continues on page 203 with the invocation and confession. Please stand. Remembering our baptism into Christ, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer for the day as printed in your bulletin. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And with this new month of June comes a new word of the month that we encourage you to memorize and take to heart. This month's word is from Acts 2, verse 39. We speak it together. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Acts 2, verse 39. 
You may be seated for the further reading of God's holy word. The Old Testament reading for this day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and all the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We stand and sing together the Alleluia in verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine but the Father's, who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having confessed our faith in the baptismal liturgy, we continue with the hymn, Come Holy Spirit, God and Lord, Hymn 497, and you may be seated.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for this Pentecost day is from the Old Testament reading from Genesis 11. Then they said, Come, let us build a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, if you've been around college sports, you have heard about the new name, image, likeness policy. Adopted in 2021 in response to lawsuits claiming that college athletes should be able to profit from the use of their name or their likeness. Now many D1 athletes have their own brand. Some are in line to earn millions while still competing at the college level because of endorsements. And there is much debate about what this will do to help or to hurt college sports and athletes. Now despite the billions of dollars that are at stake in college sports, this controversy is rather small compared to the issues raised in our reading today. What is your name? What is your likeness? What is your image? First, your name. Many names have been pronounced in graduations around our community the last couple of weeks. Hundreds will be pronounced correctly or incorrectly this afternoon as high school graduates walk across the stage to get a diploma with their name on it, declaring them a graduate. Now each student already has been given a name by their parents. Some will now seek to make a name for themselves maybe by excelling in college, getting a degree, starting a career. They may want their name to be synonymous with success and excellence. Whether or not we are about to begin a career, our text provides some valuable do's and don'ts about that. You probably heard about the story of the Tower of Babel since you were a kid. It occurs in history just centuries after the Great Flood. Noah and his family have settled into this area of Ararat. Their descendants have been repopulating the area. God has commanded them to fill the earth and replenish it. But just several generations after, people had a different idea. Instead of dispersing around the world, they would build a tower to showcase their ability and serve as a rallying point so they could stay together. Nothing new we might think about that. Last year we took a red bus tour around parts of New York City. The number of enormous buildings competing with each other for grandeur and attention is mind-boggling. And that's just one city. The world's great buildings are many. Most are named after their builder or owner. And our text is not a condemnation of naming rights or even forbidding the building of cities. It's rather a pointed rebuke of the human desire to make a name for ourselves instead of exalting the name of God and finding contentment in that name. Now, even the largest human building is far smaller than a modest mountain, and God has made thousands of those. You only have to go a few hundred miles above the surface of the earth, and you can't even see anything that humans have made. So the motivation of God is not jealousy about what people might do that could compete with him. Why is he so concerned? because they are trying to create something to keep themselves together as a substitute for what he already has given them. They already had in common that they were the creatures of God. They owed their very life to his rescue through the great flood. God had named Adam, and God gave Adam the right to name Eve and all the living things that he had made. But instead of delighting in serving God, honoring and worshiping his name. They sought honor for themselves. Let us make a name for ourselves, rejecting the name God has given. 
which brings us to likeness and image. For the athlete, the image is their brand, their likeness, whether a picture, a logo, a photo. They can now make money on the use of their image or likeness in advertising and marketing, like the professional athletes do. Well, in building this Tower of Babel, the people were creating their own brand in a way. Instead of simply a tower reaching up into the heavens, it would be a place where they could all see it from afar. Its walls and defenses would protect them from invaders. And how different from the garden that God had first made for human home. That was a place of harmony and unity, no walls required. It again shows how far the fall into sin had changed human society. Cain kills his brother Abel, and violence continued on from there. And now they are making a city in their image, the, city, the image of a self-centered, violent world. Just a few centuries after God had cleansed the earth with the flood, violence and bloodshed are like they are today. Maybe not school shootings or the terrible loss of life in wars, but it was already a brutal world. Why? Well, it has everything to do with image and likeness. Not long ago, I was at the Children's Museum with our grandsons watching a show about the imagination of movies like Star Trek, how it led to modern innovations like cell phones and space travel. The narrator said in an impressive tone that the most powerful force in the universe is the human imagination. Now clearly, he represented a human-centered universe where we are the masters of what we accomplish. The imagination of the human spirit is truly ambitious. It can lead to inventions and works of art. But when infected by sin, it is that very spirit of man that had rebelled against the God who had created him to begin with. And Genesis 8 records these words of God about humans. The imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Jesus said, out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries. And it is that way still today. The path to making a name for yourself in acting or music may take more than talent. More than a few people have been willing to sacrifice their moral identity, who I am, for the sake of getting what I want. Graduates, even high school graduates, have faced that choice countless times. Whether or not to cheat to get the grade they need, to lie to get out of trouble, to do what is wrong so that you fit in with other people. And whether they go to college or into the workplace, they will find that those choices continue daily and the stakes get even higher. Let us make a name for ourselves. Well, the name they ultimately made in Babel was the same name you and I have owned ourselves, rebel. God saw through their great project to their real plan to reject his will, his name, and to create their own identity and purpose. And out of grace, God intervened to thwart a plan that would have led to further ruin. He confused their language. And God's intervention was as a rescuer. By causing that project to fail, he dispersed them from that place around the earth and saved them from further catastrophe. But then God pointed the way to the right way for a name and an image and a likeness. Shortly after this account in Genesis, we read about Abraham who left his homeland at God's direction with this promise, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Abraham's name is remembered to our time and it's a name that is synonymous with faith. Abraham trusted God, not himself. That was shown in going to the land that God directed trusting him for a son, and trusting that God would keep his promise no matter what the odds. And through the descendant promised to Abraham, God has made it possible for you to have a name that will be remembered forever. 
The Son of God made a name for himself by accepting the mission to restore the rebel. He took our name when he took our sins and died for them. And because Jesus conquered our sins, he has given you and me a name that we can be proud of. Instead of making a name for ourselves, God gives us a good name, and Pentecost shows the plan. Whereas at Babel, people were confused and languages mixed, now on Pentecost, they all hear the good news in their own native tongue. God joined together those who were so different. He gave them a common name, Christian, child of God. On that first Pentecost, thousands were baptized into the triune name. And God continues to do it in our very presence today as Kinsley received the new name, forgiven child of God, the one that you also bear. Now what she becomes, what her high school graduates become, we do not yet know. But one thing she or we do not have to do is to make a name for ourselves. God already has given you a good name. In Christ, he has clothed you with the image and likeness of his own son, Jesus. And that will endure forever. The name, image, likeness controversy in sports is likely to go on for a while. You know, I suppose you could simply abbreviate the NIL or the NIL controversy for short. And ironically, what does NIL mean? Zero. Non-existent. Nothing. That's ultimately what we get when we make a name for ourselves. All the things that we accomplish in life ultimately will disappear. What will remain is what God has done in us and the blessings to others that come through us as we honor the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which we bear. That's a name and an image and a likeness to be proud of and give eternal blessings no amount of money can buy. May we also hallowed be thy name in us. For Jesus' sake, amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. As our offerings are brought forward, I invite you to sing the offertory hymn, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling, hymn 650, verse 1. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Comfort us with divine peace and do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. Receive the tithes and offerings we place before you now as an outward expression of our love and trust in you that they may be a blessing to many. For Jesus' sake, amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you sent out your disciples to proclaim the resurrection. Open the mouths of your pastors and people to declare Christ's praises to all who will hear. Be with missionaries Leif Camp, Slava Shadron, Slava Boyshenko, Chuck Ferry, Thomas Bernard, John Wolfe, James and Crystal Neuendorf, 
and military chaplains Matt Prince and John Lorenz as they announce your name to many. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, sustain those who are mocked for believing and confessing the truth of your word, that they may remain faithful to you. For those who are being persecuted for the faith in many countries around the world, give them strength to endure. And we pray that you would bring an end to the conflict and suffering in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have poured out your Spirit on, upon us that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and daughters in that faith. Bless all parents that they may faithfully catechize their children in your word. Allow our vacation Bible school, which begins tomorrow, to be a conduit to those children who do not yet know of your love for us in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of might, preserve your people from their enemies. Bring peace to the nations and prosper the cause of life. Bless our leaders, especially our president, governor, Congress, legislature, and all judges and magistrates. Give them a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all, with a heart of mercy for the weak and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of compassion, remember in mercy the sick and the suffering. Grant them healing according to your will. This day we especially remember Holda Gerker, Emily Correo Nert, Jeanette Chastain, Kenny Kendall, James Wittern, Greg Prangy, Rosellen Y, Barb Rungy, Patty Harlow, along with those we name in our hearts. Give all of these your children confidence that you know their needs and will well supply them with all that they need to endure to the day of your coming. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, O oh God, for those who place their lives on the line so that we might enjoy the freedoms of this country. Bless those who serve in the military, the police and firefighters, EMTs and other medical workers. Grant them safety in their vocations and a surety that their work matters in our community and nation. Lord, in your mercy. We rejoice, Lord of all knowledge, along with the graduates of Seymour High School who will have their commencement ceremony today. Help them find satisfaction in their achievements and bless their next steps in life. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. A few announcements to draw to your attention from our informer. As we said in the prayers, Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow and runs through Friday, meeting each day from 9 until 12 noon. There's a table uh, for registration of children, um, so if you haven't registered, uh, you can do so right after this service today. Also, there's a t-shirt table there that if you'd like to pick up your t-shirt for Vacation Bible School, you can also do that after worship. Just a reminder, too, that the Vacation Bible School elementary volunteers, those serving in grades 1 to 5, will have an orientation meeting this evening beginning at 6.30 p.m., in the large gym over at the school, and all volunteers are encouraged to attend that. Again, we wel welcome you and we wish you all a blessed Pentecost as we remember the gracious work of the Holy Spirit who brings God's name, image, and likeness into our hearts and lives. We now join together to sing our closing hymn, hymn 496, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. God's blessings on your week. <laughs>